All right, this is an off the cuff one. Don't usually do this. Never seen this documentation before, but I have a good feeling about it. So let's see what we can see. Okay. Let's open up the terminal and we're going to set up a project. So I always go to my projects folder here. I make a directory. I'll just call this radio. And I'll change directory into radio. And then I'll open up VS Code. All right. All right. Now, in VS Code, well, we're scraping some sites here, so let me pull this one down. Put this guy over here. What I like to do is create Jupyter Notebooks. It makes things a little bit easier to deal with, especially if you're just making smaller programs. So we're going to do that. We're going to first, we got to pip install Gradio. So you want to make sure that you are in the correct directory. See, you can see I'm at my home directory here. That's what squiggly is. But that means I'm not like anywhere in here. So what I got to do is I got to get back in to this area. And if you remember, Gradio was inside my projects folder, Gradio, and then I can do code dash r dot. And now you'll see I'm where I want to be. Okay, so if you're inside a Jupyter notebook, which I am because I have the extension on. If you put an exclamation there, you can run your pip installs like that. So we're going to pip install Gradio. Yeah, so you can run it below the code below as a Python script or in a Jupyter notebook, which is basically Google Collab, but better. And this Whatever you're installing, it's going to install into the interpreter, the Python interpreter that you're using. You might have a couple of different versions of Python on your system. Type which Python. And you can see mine is right there, homebrew, because I'm on a Mac. So if I were to install this, it's going to go into my homebrew, which is fine. I don't really care. but. When you're inside of a Jupyter Notebook, there's one more layer of complexity, which I still haven't quite figured out, but it depends on the kernel that you choose. So up here you can see Jupyter kernel. I have a couple that I've made. So I'm just going to choose uh, that one. So you can see Jupyter kernel here. If I go here, which Python, I'm still calling homebrew. All right, so pip install Gradio. Starlet. Nice. All right, that's done. I can clear my outputs. And I don't need to do that again, so I'll just comment that out. Now we're going to run an import statement, which imports part of Gradio, or actually it imports all of Gradio into this project as GUR alias you could just type gr then we're going to define a function and we're going to call it greet and that function can take someone's name or it can take a representation of name and my recommendation to you is if you're new or if you want to learn or get better don't ever copy and paste even if you don't have any fucking idea what this says or what it does just type it always type it for like the first month or two I had no idea what was going on I was just following a book and I was just typing and like at some point you kind of just like know what's going on it's kind of like talking when you're like a baby you don't like wait to figure out what everything means and then you start talking you just start you just say nonsense for a while and then all of a sudden shit makes sense right so import radio as gr and I wouldn't even autocomplete like that like I just did but I don't want to waste all your time so we're going to define a function greet name and that function all it's going to do is it's going to return a string called hello with a space at the end whoa 
I'm going to put it in here. And then it's going it, to, what it's basically going to do, it's going to return this. Hello, space, and then name, which is whatever you put in here. So, Johnson, and then it's going to return that. Okay, so that's what those two things do. This is a variable, and this variable, as you can see, variable. This variable is going to be assigned all the shit that happens over here. So remember, gr is Gradio. Gradio has its own functions. It is a Python package that you Python imported from somewhere else. And you don't know what's in it unless you open it up and look. There's probably a lot of crap in it. But you can see here that we're calling it gur. You could also call it anything you want. But so we're, we're we have a demo here, right? Because we're we're trying to like initiate the demo. So this variable demo, it's going to run Gradio as gr, and then from Gradio inside of the Gradio project, there's like some folders and some other folders, and inside those folders there's some other shit. That's what that dot means, or it means that, um, whoa, or it means that inside of the Gradio project there's a function called interface which does some stuff and you don't know what it does, but it takes these um, parameters. So you can pass it a greeting, you can pass it text, and you can pass it, or you can inputs and outputs. That's basically what's happening here. And then now you're actually, you're saying demo. So whatever that, that thing became, and then dot launch, because it's another Gradio thing. So let's just run it and see what happens. Something's probably gonna pop up or explode. Ta-da! Great. So look at that. We now um, we now have a bit of an interface. So name. Remember this Gradio thing. Name. What's your name? Uh, Darkwing Duck. Submit. So we passed Darkwing Duck, and our function returned hello. Darkwing Duck with an exclamation mark. Pretty cool. This is what Gradio does. It, it builds interfaces, apparently. That's probably why this is called interface. And this is why I was so stoked when I looked at this for like two and a half seconds because I've been trying to figure out how to build interfaces for the last year without actually doing it. And it looks like they have an interface for a whole bunch of stuff that you really just don't ever want to fucking deal with. But now maybe we can, you know, start dealing with it, which is great. So that's why I decided to film this and let's just see if we can walk through and go. So the demo appeared below. All right, the interface class. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now we have some components, not opponents, but components. Compatriot. So let's, here we go. We have another, um, you don't have to import this guy again. You've already done it. I can't scroll on that to me, right? All right. But now we do have another function here. We have, we still have the same one up here to find a function, yada, yada, yada. So I'm just going to go up here and delete these guys for a second. Oh, actually, this is just expanding upon it. This is saying, uh, in the second example, we're going to go demo equals gradio dot interface we're going to pass the greeting we're going to pass the inputs which is going to be another function you know dream within a dream this time inputs is going to equal so here's a good here's a good time when we can type some shit right demo equals gr dot interface fn equals greet. If you don't know what it means, just keep typing. Inputs equals gr dot text box. Lines equals two. Hmm. Lines equals two. What could that mean? Well, it looks like it's going to give them two lines worth of size. Space. Placeholder equals, what do you think that means? Placeholder. Zip. And when you put something like that in quotes, that becomes the placeholder. 
outputs equals text. Demo.launch. All right, let's go full screen. Pair to send it. Whoa, what's happening? Oh, DR. Did I write DR? I did. I did a doctor interface. Uh, no, not RR. GR. But if we wanted Gradio to be doctor, then you could. You just have to replace all the GRs. You got to remember to do that. See, now it's, now it's doctor, right? That was probably confusing. I shouldn't have done that to you guys. Put it back. This is this is just you can call whatever you want. You're, you're like, hey, my name's Gradio, but you can call me whatever your nickname is. Chicken wing. Everybody calls me chicken wings, right? That's what that is. Just makes it easier to type. So boom. Now we have a bigger box here and an output box here, and it says to create a public link. Share equals true in launch. Hmm. Well, okay. Share equals true. And now, oh boy, look at that. Now I can share you guys my demo. That's fucking sweet. I love this app already. This is really tight. Cool, cool. Let's see what, what happens if I do. Well. Hey. I need to refresh. Oh, nothing happens. Okay. Maybe that's not how it's supposed to work. <laughs> All right. Let's keep going. This is cool. So now we have. more input and output components, right? So they're just giving us the code and showing us what's here. So if you want this kind of a thing right here, cause you like talk like, you know, temperature, right? Well, it's morning, I guess they're actually talking about temperature, but I was thinking more like the temperature of, you know, a machine learning model. So remember, type all this crap. So you get practice. Import radio as gear. Define a function, that's def. Greet, name, blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to sit here and type it because you guys don't give a shit watching me type it, but you have to type it. When I run it, now I'm getting a different kind of component, which is pretty rad. Good morning, Sadaf. It's 23 degrees today. What other kind of stuff do we have? Ooh, images. This could get fun. What do you think you're going to send people? Don't say dick pics. Don't say it. I know you're thinking it. So Gradio supports many types of components, images, data frames, videos, labels, label. But for this one, we're going to need another package called NumPy. Everybody calls it NumPy, but they're all wrong. It's NumPy. So you can paste in NumPy in Dr. Gradio. And look at that. Wow. Let's do this. Let's do this in. Um, let's do share equals true. So we could tell our friend, hey, upload some pictures of the trips you just went on. Here, I'll give you a link. And you give him this link. And now all of a sudden, here's um, this is Vectron, by the way. If he ever gets approved, we can drop him up here. Oh, sick. Boom. And it made him like, I don't know, a golden statue. That is super tight. That is really, really fucking awesome because that's running out of here. Oh, wow. This this is a game changer. This package is a game changer for sure. I'm going to send you guys all sorts of cool links of stuff. You'll probably hate me by the end of it, but, you know, it'll be fun while it lasts. Hello, blocks. Let's take a look at a simple example. What's different here? Name, output, greeting, button. <laughs> okay. Blocks are made with a with clause. Okay, so a with clause. And any component created inside this clause is automatically added to the app. They appear vertically. All right, cool, let's make a block. Let's just see what happens here if I take this. 
paste it in, and I'm pressing Shift Enter to run it. So now I have this situation going on. Okay, not too much different than before. But now we're seeing, okay, cool. So this is why you want to start typing this, right? Because up here we had our function and we had this width. So we have this block. So width gradio or yeah, gradio gr dot blocks as demo. The name is going to be this. We're going to create a text box with the label inside of it or outside of it name. We're going to create the output, which is going to be also a text box with the label outside of it, output box, which is going to be a greeting button. Greet. Oh wow, this thing's actually on. Hey. And then greeting button dot click. So on click function or f sorry fn equals greet. Yada yada yada. And then when we go down here, you can see it's starting to do some stuff. So now we have some tabs and we're, ba we're basically making an app by just writing Python. And if you've been doing this for a couple of months, you can appreciate how awesome that is. If you've been doing this for a couple of years, you can appreciate how awesome that is. But if you've been doing it for a week, you probably don't give a shit. Well, let's flip, flip around some images, huh? All right. Or no, you know what? Let, let's let's sharing is caring. Share equals true. Boom. So now it's gonna give us a link that we can go send to our friends Bing. and show how cool we are. So flip text text box. I am never gonna be backwards. <laughs> Pretty sweet. Let's flip an image. Let's take here this guy. And flip skis. Wow. That's super cool. That is super, super cool. So just to recap, beginner's lesson numeros unos is that I like running things in a Jupyter Notebook because it's less crap you have to deal with. If you want to open a Jupyter Notebook, the easiest way to do it is when you have a new um, project. Uh, on a Mac, it's Shift Command P to open this guy up. And then you just start typing in new Jupyter, press enter. There it is. You'll have to select a kernel or create one. I have an article on that. And, uh, well, always type your shit because you're going to get better at it. I'm going to go through here and look at this more because it looks like there is a lot of super awesome interfaces we can make, like image classification. Look at this. I actually might need some of this stuff right now. <laughs> Reactive interfaces, huh? Calculators. Cool. What else we got? Connecting to a database. Sick. Creating a real-time dashboard from Google Sheets. Wow, I hope a lot of people really, really work on this thing and just make a whole bunch of cool stuff because this is this is fantastic. And here's where the fun begins, right? Getting started, Gradio and LLMs. So I think we're going to make, um, we're going to put, put chat, Serpy, chat, llama, chat, everybody in one of these Gradio things and just start firing them around. Look at this. Awesome. Oh, that is fucking fantastic. Actually, I got to go send this to somebody. So in the future, I will do videos where I actually have a camera on and we can interact a little bit more, but you know. I just fired this up and wanted to share. So, yeah, yeah. 